thinks they can pit themselves against nature is a fool. Nature is always going to be more powerful than any individual human being. The secret is not to pit yourself against nature, it's to learn to fend your flow to hers. Well, when I travel in Northern Ontario, you're traveling in real wilderness. Although you're traveling with an open canoe, you still need to travel light. And you have to be self-reliant, and things can go wrong. You can lose things, things can break. You need to know how to make a mendu and to, you know, to, to repair things. You need, need to know how to fish, how to clean a fish, how to, how to cook it, how to cook a meal with very simple ingredients. That's all bushcraft. Bushcraft is a, is a knowledge of nature that enables you to travel safely and relying upon nature to some extent for your sustenance, self-support. It's the knowledge that our ancestors had. It's the knowledge of First Nations. And it's knowledge that's not just ancient, but it can be modern as well, because there's new knowledge, new understanding. So it's a blending of old and new, but at its core is a love and understanding of nature. Abakimi is beautiful Canadian shield, boreal forest on top of granite. I guess from an, as an outsider it's a mysterious sounding name, but it's a very large wilderness area set aside. And I've travelled in many other remote parts of uh, Ontario, they're stunning. And this is one of the largest, and you know, it's, it, it has a draw. And it's the remoteness, I mean, the, the thought of accessing it by float plane and by train, that's really exciting. I always tell people that when you come to the Boreal Forest, you're coming to a living entity. It's not a place made of many trees. It's many trees that make one thing, one entity, to my mind. It's a huge organism, and you feel that way. It feels tolerant of you. I didn't start canoeing really seriously until I was in my 20s. I wish I'd started much sooner. To me, the canoe is the, is, is the greatest invention of humankind. I mean, it's just wonderful. You know. and, and it's a personification of bushcraft. I mean, you float on water because somebody worked out how to use natural resources and make a boat out of them. Uh, and it's physical, it's demanding, it's tough, it's a hard way of traveling. You're doing a long trip, portaging, heavy loads, a lot of food, you know, you, you, You've got the load of the canoe, the days are long, the wind can be against you. It, it makes something off you. It's an honest way of traveling. You know, when you come away from a place like this, you know, yes, of course, we all say we're spiritually enriched and we feel great, but our bones ache as well. And, but, but the spiritual enrichment we gain from paddling, we gain in a very honest way. Traveling like this is, is, is really good. You lose yourself in the wilderness. Although you know where you are because you have a map and a compass, in, in a sense of time, you don't know what day it is because, you know, days don't seem to be important. There are bigger things here.
Fire is a fundamental human skill. Um, I've seen other animals use fire, but I've never seen any other creature create it. It's what separates us from other animals. It's our special skill. And um, it's a vital skill in a remote place. It means life. It means protection from dangerous animals. It means warmth. Um, it, it, you know, it means safe food to eat. And it also means community and cheer. And it's a great place to gather around and, and, and swap ideas. But there's a lot to know about fire. It's not as simple as a flame. Bushrock transforms your view of the forest, that is for sure. In time, you become much more perceptive. You look for tiny things in nature. It's the small things that you notice that tell a big story. You gain this experience. And then when you're traveling, you get insights. You, you feel perceptive of something. And, and it could be something as simple as, I feel that there could be something here to see. This habitat will hold a moose, for example. You might come across the remains of wolf droppings that are a year old, but because they're full of hair and of a certain animal, you can determine what species it was. With experience, your subconscious can pick up all of those details and interpret them and use them to read the landscape. But the secret is to learn to turn off your conscious mind and, and listen to those messages and to act upon them. There's an aesthetic to bushcraft, I think, that's really important. Things done well look right, and there's a delicacy, and I think it's, it's, it's a thing that the woodsman knows, that, the, that you make it just strong enough, not too strong, not too weak, just right, and that demonstrates your knowledge and understanding of the materials that you're working with. When I first started making canoe paddles, I did it the modern way, and I was never satisfied really with the results. But one day I woke up and I said to myself, just do it the way you would with an ax. It's much more efficient and it's much more rewarding. It's all part of the self-reliance that is at the core of bushcraft. And if I damage it, I can repair it, and if I break it, I make another one. And when it is worn out, it can be thrown into the forest and nature can have it back. That to me is perfection. That is it totally in keeping with canoeing. And then I realized that learning those skills was interesting in its own right. And as time has gone on, I realized that many of these skills are disappearing. The really sad thing is that when this knowledge is lost, an interface with the landscape is lost. That's the one thing that uh, First Nations have that we, we, we should aspire to, is this close tie to the land, because w w we depend upon it. I think the, the bushcraft that I employ is not um, necessarily First Nation, it's not native. When I work with indigenous groups, I would never affect what they do with something from outside, because they have their own way of doing things, which is, is important to pay respect to. I use and utilize the skills that are appropriate to travel, and there are some modern things that are better than the old, and there are some things that are old that are better than the modern. But it's, it's in the harmony of those two things that your journey is smooth, and uh, it means that there are few interruptions to the rhythm of a journey, because everything just works.
I started learning bushcraft when I was eight. Um, I'm still a 20 year old at heart, but your tendons aren't as flexible as they were and you have to fight against that. And I believe very, very dearly that I, I want to fill every minute with a race full run. There are a lot of questions I still need to answer and I need to dedicate more time to that. The future of bushcraft, well, that's for others to determine. And it'll be other young people that come along and hopefully we'll take it further. And even after many years, I'm still a student. Because the moment you say you're an expert, you can't learn anymore. And the learning is what it's all about. There was a, a character who came to Canada uh, called Grey Owl, and he said something that I think is really profound. He said, we must remember that at the end, nature does not belong to us. We belong to it. And that is one of the most profound statements in conservation that has ever been made by somebody in love and inspired with the Canadian wilderness.